Hello and welcome to our course on MOZ 77419 SharePoint 2013. These are the objectives for the first unit. First of all you're going to meet the instructor, that's me. And then I'm going to answer the question what is MOZ 77419 SharePoint 2013? I'll then talk to you about the structure of the course and the approach that I'm taking and try to answer at a high level the question what is SharePoint? I'm then going to talk to you about SharePoint versions and editions and I'm going to say a few things about installation and setup. One very important aspect of the course is that you need to be aware of administration and privileges on your installation of SharePoint and I need to tell you a couple of important things about touch screens as well. Now by the time we get to the end of this first section and before you start the rest of the course you need to be sure that your installation and workspace are ready to go because from the next unit onwards you're going to be learning how to use SharePoint. First of all then, the instructor, that's me. My name is Toby. I specialize in Microsoft Office software and in SharePoint in particular, and I'm a Microsoft Office specialist in SharePoint 2013. I just describe myself as a Microsoft Office specialist in SharePoint 2013. And when you pass exam 77-419, you will also be a Microsoft Office Specialist in SharePoint 2013. And when we talk about 77-419, we're talking about both the course and the exam. Now, at the time of recording this, which is in late summer of 2014, the exam has only been available for a couple of months and there is very little in the way of course material in the public domain. It's possible that by the time you follow this course there'll be all sorts of books and manuals and websites and so on. But in terms of getting access to the right material for the course there are very few sources and we're looking here at the Microsoft.com page describing the exam and giving you a list of contents in the course. It's not very detailed and most of the information you get about this course at the moment you're going to get from me because I've actually taken the exam. I've looked in great detail at what information there is and I'm going to try to make sure on this course that I cover just about everything you're going to need to know. Now having said that and if you have any experience of Microsoft courses and exams you'll know that things do change so although there is basically a course syllabus here which I'm showing you and which you should read through very carefully you should always check Microsoft.com for the latest information and there is actually a pretty vibrant and healthy Microsoft learning community and you should also introduce yourself to MS Learning and look at the latest news about SharePoint 2013 training in general and 77-419 in particular but basically the objective of this course is to help you to get through that exam and that's what I'm going to aim to do over the balance of the course. So given that it's actually quite a big subject SharePoint 2013 what's the structure of the course and what's the approach? Well basically the course is divided up into what are approximately one hour segments each made up of five or six units and then at the end of each of those one hour segments I'm going to set you a little sort of knowledge test and practical test on what we've covered in that segment. When it comes to the actual exam, part of it is straightforward theory, multiple choice type of questions, but part of it is practical as well. And you're given a sort of simulated SharePoint environment and required to perform certain SharePoint operations within that simulated environment. Now I cannot create exactly the same environment that Microsoft will give you to do the exam but I'm going to try and simulate the simulation if you like and show you the sorts of things that you'll be required to do and roughly how you'll be able to go about doing them. 
Having said that, if you've had plenty of practice with SharePoint alongside covering the course and in preparation for the exam, that preparation is going to be very important because the tasks you're required to do are not particularly long or complicated but you're going to be much more confident in doing them if you've had plenty of practice. So I can't emphasize enough how important practice is alongside what we're doing on the course. Now SharePoint, like most of the Microsoft Office related products, has gone through a number of versions over the past so many years. SharePoint's been around for about 10 years or so. And in recent times, we've had SharePoint 2007, SharePoint 2010, SharePoint 2013. And with SharePoint, the changes between the versions have tended to be pretty major. With SharePoint 2013, things have got even more complicated because if you're going to use SharePoint, there are basically two main options now. There is SharePoint Online and there is SharePoint On-Premise or On-Premises. With SharePoint Online, you basically pay for access to SharePoint. The software itself and the storage are, in broad terms, hosted elsewhere. You can think of them as being cloud-hosted. And you don't actually install SharePoint yourself. You basically pay for access to it. But you can also buy and use on-premise versions of SharePoint. SharePoint Server and SharePoint Enterprise or SharePoint Server Enterprise. And these pieces of software you install on your own servers, perhaps at your own office or in your own factory or in your own enterprise. Now, these tend to be used by people that want to control their own installation of SharePoint. And very often these are larger companies and enterprises. Now, given all these different options, and given that you're going to need access to SharePoint, you may be using SharePoint Online, you may be using SharePoint On-Premise. But basically what we're covering on this course applies equally to each. The screens will often look a little bit different, and what you exactly you see may look slightly different from time to time. And where this difference is significant, I'm going to try to point it out. But overall, the things that we're doing apply to any version of SharePoint 2013, but they won't apply to earlier versions. So it's no good having SharePoint 2010 installed and thinking you're going to be able to get through this exam using SharePoint 2010, because I'm I'm afraid you won't. You need SharePoint 2013 either online or an on-premise version. The next question is how do you install and set up SharePoint? Well if you go for SharePoint online you don't have to worry about that because it is all installed and set up for you. Pricing on this I think is very reasonable particularly if you just need it for a month or two while you work your way through this course but even using it on an ongoing basis access to SharePoint online I think is pretty inexpensive for the amount of functionality that you get. If you really do want to install an on-premise SharePoint solution, I'm certainly not going to even talk about the procedures to install and set it up. There is a lot of information available via Microsoft. It's a big job. You need a lot of expertise to do it. And I wouldn't even start to try to describe that whole process to you. If you need to go down that line, then you need to allow yourself plenty of time to get that up and working before you attempt to do this course. But if all you want to do is to get the know-how, to get up to speed on SharePoint 2013 and pass the 77419 exam, SharePoint Online would be my recommended solution. Now there is one consequence of the use of SharePoint Online, or in fact any edition of SharePoint that you need to be a little bit wary of. And that is that when we come to do administration, you will need certain privileges to be able to do some of the things that we're going to be doing. And if you are, say, using an installation of SharePoint at work and you haven't got those privileges, so you're not able to do things like give people permissions to do certain things, then that is going to hold you back quite a bit. Now, you probably will only discover those restrictions when we get to them, but just be aware that you may need to ask somebody 
nicely to give you a little bit more privileges or at least a little bit more in the way of privileges on a short term basis to be able to try certain things out or to do certain things. So just be wary that if you are given access to SharePoint on somebody else's installation they may limit what you can do and you may need to ask them nicely to give you a little bit more in the way of rights and privileges to do certain things that we'll be doing on the course. Now just to round off this part of the discussion I'd like to direct you to a page in the TechNet part of Microsoft.com that gives a detailed chart, in fact three detailed charts, listing the SharePoint features and which editions they feature in. Now I should warn you that this information is, as they say, liable to change without notice. But at the time of recording this there are basically three long tables on this particular page. And if I take you to the first one it deals with feature availability across Office 365 plans. So if you have an Office 365 subscription and you're looking at including SharePoint within that, then this lists all of the SharePoint features. It's a very long table and which of those options they're in. Now, of course, we don't cover a lot of these SharePoint features within 77419. We're really talking about basic to intermediate SharePoint. A lot of these are very advanced and specialized features. But if you want to make sure the features we're covering are in the edition that you're using, it's a great table. Then there's a second table. And this table covers SharePoint feature availability across standalone plans. So the plans that you saw on that page just a couple of minutes ago here SharePoint Online Plan 1 and SharePoint Online Plan 2 that's the list of their features and then the third table gives you details of feature availability across the on-premises solutions. So I apologize for how complicated all this is, it isn't my fault, but this page and those three tables are a great source to tell you whether a particular SharePoint feature is in a particular SharePoint edition or service. And finally, just a word of warning here, if you are using a touch device, planning to use a touch device throughout the course, you should find that that in itself during the course will work fine. But you do need to bear in mind that when you are doing the exam, probably using a proctoring organization where you will go into an exam room, you one of their PCs, that PC will almost certainly not be a touch device. You will be having to use a mouse. And I suggest that you get used to doing everything that we're doing on this course with a mouse rather than just using a touch device. It's possible that with some of the proctoring organizations that can give you the facilities to take the 77419 exam, you can use a touch device, but you would need to be very certain of that before you relied upon it. So finally, you need to have access to SharePoint in order to continue on to the next section. This is what my Toby Arnott team site looks like. You should have a site, preferably a team site available to get started that looks like that. And the first thing that we're going to do in the next section is I'm going to explain what you can see on the screen there and explain the structure and navigation of SharePoint sites. So a quick resume of what we've covered in this introductory section. I introduced myself, talked about the Moz 77419 SharePoint 2013 exam and the structure of this course, the approach that I'm taking. I also talked a little about what SharePoint is in terms of a little bit about its history, versions, editions and so on. You'll find out more about what it actually is and does in the early parts of the course. We looked at those versions and editions and then I talked about installation and setup, how to get access to SharePoint and a couple of important things to bear in mind and in particular that you are going to need the rights and privileges to perform the various operations that we are going to on the course and I gave you a little bit of a warning about touch screens. 
Before you get on to the next section, as I said just now, your installation and workspace should be ready to go. You may not understand what you're looking at. And just about the first thing I'm going to do in the next section is to describe and explain the SharePoint 2013 workspace. That's the end of this section. I'll see you in the next one.